Hi, I'm Alistair and this is a short tutorial video explaining how you can use an OLED display like this one connected to an Arduino or other microprocessor to create a kind of an onboard status information that displays useful information. So um, if I just hold that a bit closer to the camera so you can see the display, here I've got a Wemos D1 Mini that's connected to my network and I'm cycling through two pages of information. That's the build time and date of the sketch and here's the Wi-Fi network and IP address that's been assigned to the device. And those are kind of useful bits of information to know at a glance uh, if you just wanted to examine a prop and work out whether it's working correctly. But you could really display anything you wanted on one of these displays, so uh, whether a certain button was being depressed or the number of seconds that the sketch had been running for, the current state of the device, all these things. And it's a really useful way to be able to display them directly uh, on the device itself rather than needing to plug in a USB cable and then issue a serial print command to display on the serial monitor for example. So these little OLED displays come in sort of different varieties depending on the sort of interface that you want to use to control them. Um, so some of them use an SPI interface so that would require a MOSI, MISO, clock and slave select uh, pins. I'm using the slightly simpler interface, which is I squared C or I2C, and that just requires um, two wires, one of which is a clock line and one of which is a data line. So uh, they are SCL and SDA. Now on a Wemos D1 Mini, which is the board I'm using, those lines are assigned to D1, that's the clock line, and D2 is the data line. And those pins are assigned on the hardware itself, so you can't change those in code. Whenever you use an I2C interface on a Wemos, uh, those will be the pins you use. Um, now, if you are using an Arduino Nano or an Uno instead, uh, then those pins instead are on A4 for the uh, data line, so that goes to SDA, and A5 for the clock line, that goes to SCL. So again, normally these could be used as analog input pins, but if you're using an I2C interface, um, they double up and operate as the clock and data lines instead. Um, and then you just have a 5 volt connection to VCC and a ground line in both cases. And here's the code I've got running on the, uh, the D1 itself. Um, so starting off at the top, I've got some libraries which I've included. Um, this library here is not required to make the display work. This is a, a Wi-Fi library. Um, so this is what I'm going to use to actually connect to the Wi-Fi network. And then it's the information about that connection which I'm going to be displaying on the OLED display itself. Uh, so that isn't required to make the display work. This library is what I'm using to interface with the display. Um, so you can get it from this GitHub link here. There's quite a few different libraries available um, for connecting to different LCD displays. Um, I know there's one from Adafruit. Some of them are specific to particular displays. This one both seems to be quite a generic display, so it works with many different boards. Um, and it also works on, you know, I'm using it on a, on a D1 Mini, but it will work on different varieties of Arduino as well. And it also seems to be both updated um, and maintained and actually pretty efficiently coded as well having a look through the source code. So uh, this is the, the library I recommend using for LCD controls in Arduinos or similar devices at the moment. Um, and then in the constant section what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just enter my connection details to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Again that's not actually required to make the display work, that's just um, what I'm going to be uh, getting the device to do which I'm then going to update information about. And I'm going to declare an array of character strings which is going to form the uh, items on my menu. So I'm going to have a menu that will display different types of information and these are going to be the headings of the menu. But you can add uh, you know, as many more as you want down here as well. Um, that's just to kind of paginate the, the status information and make it look a bit prettier. This is the line that actually initializes the display itself. So there's several different constructors uh, included in this library up here and you, you have to use the right constructor for the type of display I'm using. So in my case I'm using a display that's powered by the SSD1306 chip. 
it is 128 pixels wide by 32 high and I'm using as I mentioned before the I2C interface to that display so if you're using um, you know a board that was uh, 64 characters high instead you'd replace that there and if you're using an SPI interface you'd replace that there for example as well uh, so you use the constructor that matches the uh, type of display and the type of interface you're using um, now because we're using uh, I2C there's there's no we don't have to specify a pin that we're using because like I say the I2C data and clock lines are kind of set in hardware anyway they're always the same so we don't need to pass in any parameters to the display we'll just put in minus one and now this is another reason why I like the use of this uh, LCD GFX library is that uh, it provides some kind of helper functions for displaying information on the display and this uh, S app menu is one of them so this is a class that's actually going to provide a nicely paginated menu that you can kind of scroll through and click on and get different bits of information on the display as well. Uh, so we'll create a menu item using that. In setup we'll just uh, initialize the display, clear it out, we'll specify the font that we want to use for any text written to the screen, we'll create and show a menu um, using that menu class uh, which we had up here and giving it the array of items which uh, we specified up here. Um, so these are all kind of helper functions that come with that LCD GFX library. And then here we'll actually get the, the device to do something. So we'll connect to the Wi-Fi network that we specified at the above uh, using the password and the ID provided. And that's it for setup. And then the, the main program loop, so this is where we're actually going to display the information. So what information is going to be displayed on the OLED display depends on the currently selected menu item. Uh, so we've got this display.menu selection and then we pass in uh, the menu that we're talking about, which is the one that we created up here. Uh, so case zero, well that's the, the first menu item. And remember that when we uh, declared our array up here, the first menu item was about network info. So what network info will we display in that menu item? Uh, well, we'll print out the SSID. So this is like a label, and then we'll actually print the value of the SSID itself in bold. And then we'll write a label for the IP, and we'll write out whatever the local IP address that was assigned by the router, and we'll write that in bold as well. And we'll hold that information there for three seconds, and then we'll break. Uh, if we're looking at the second menu item instead, that means that we want to display some information about the build of the code here. So here we'll print out uh, just the, the date and time at which this code was last built. And you might not have seen this before, but this is some uh, this is built into kind of an Arduino macro. So this is a shortcut that's always available in your code. You can print the date and time at which the code was last compiled. And that's kind of like a useful way of checking that you're definitely looking at the latest version of some code. If you can't remember whether you uploaded it uh, to, the, to the Arduino or not, that's kind of a useful little macro you might not have seen. And again, we'll delay that for three seconds and then we'll break. So that displays uh, the relevant information depending on which menu item was chosen. And then in the next section, what we'll do, well, if I had a you know a joystick button or something attached to the uh, Wemos, what I could do here is provide a little navigation that a user could make through the menu. Uh, but I haven't put a button on, so all I'll do is I'll just scroll consistently through the menu, select one and then select the other. Uh, so that's what we'll do here. We'll clear the display, we'll show the menu for a second, and then we'll use this display.menu down to um, just automatically go to the next item of the menu. We'll then update the menu to show the next item highlighted and then we'll delay. And then because we're in a loop, what will happen is we've now selected the next item down the menu, which means that when we come back to the loop function again, this will now have updated and we'll just display the next value instead. Um, and the way that this works is it, it wraps around and it will just keep on alternating between the menu items. So if we had you know, three or four menu items here instead, uh, we'd display each one of them in turn, 
and then what we do is it would go on to the next one menu down but uh, if you wanted this value here rather than just automatically set in loop you could do this based like I say on on some kind of input from a button um, so that you've you've actually created a kind of a user interface on your Arduino or on your Wemos uh, that lets users um, select what information they want to display and then the section up here is actually displaying the information based on that chosen value and that's it.